So she knows what she's getting into and she's still willing to do it. So again, they don't have the same attitudes about it. First, I want to thank you and introduce you to Joe. Joe, meet Greg. Greg, meet Joe. Greg. Glad, glad to meet you. All right. So, um, Greg, I, you know, you and I talked last week and you could probably tell that, you know, I was really interested in your story. I thought it was a very interesting story, the way you went about your business, the way you did this, and especially given your past and your profession. I just thought it was really interesting. Um, so, and you were gracious enough to come on today and share this with some of the other guys that might help them thinking that, oh, maybe it's too late for me. Maybe it won't work, it can't work. Cause again, you hear so much of that, don't you, Joe? All these guys, like you can't, can't have. Oh, a lot of, a lot of guys. And then when they go, they go, I wish I would have done this 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Always. I done this 10 years ago. Oh. So first of all, why did you even consider going outside of the country in search of a life mate, you know, this international well, dating thing? let me explain how that happened. Um, in 2021, after many, many years of, of severe illness, my wife passed away uh, from cancer. Oh. So in 2022, uh, I, I decided, you know what, I've been... I've been doing this work long enough. I need to retire and go and enjoy, you know, do something with my life. I decided it was time to retire. I had arranged for a trip to Europe for my wife and I, but she didn't make it. But she told me that I absolutely positively had to go on the trip. So I did. And part of the trip was three weeks in Italy. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking around this extremely romantic country by myself, seeing all these couples. And there were so many couples where the man was older and the woman was younger. And it was obvious that this wasn't a father-daughter situation. And so I started doing a little checking and I found out that European women don't have the same attitudes towards age differences as or present here in America. So that is what basically gave me the idea of, well, maybe I should be looking overseas. Well, um, as you, as we talked about, uh, Ukraine is a, of interest to me because of the situation over there. But um, part of that situation is there are a lot of beautiful Ukrainian women and there aren't a lot of Ukrainian men around. Right. So that that gives us an opportunity. And uh, I was looking to see where, how am I going to do this? And I started checking out companies. As you know, I was a officer and investigator for many years. So I was very cautious about making sure that whoever I decided to go through as far as the company uh, they had to be a legitimate company. And I did a lot of background checks on a lot of these guys, and they were kind of scary. But, you, <laughs> you know, uh, a foreign affair checked out every time with, uh, you know, being in a U.S.-based company. Uh, you know, you guys, you guys are actually real people. <laughs> yeah. So... For the most part. That's why no, we don't know about it. it could be a, I don't know what he is, but no, just kidding. That's that's why I decided that, that, that a foreign affair was gonna be the best place for me to, to try this. So I joined it and started the process. Um, okay. over the past uh, let's see, I think I joined in twenty twenty two. So over the past two years I have talked with a lot of ladies. Okay. And I've actually met I've actually met three. A total of three. Okay. Uh, the first two, very pleasant experience, nice people, but they can I ask were definitely. Them? Great. I'm sorry. Can I ask? Can I ask where you met them? Where did you meet them? Yes, I met one of them in Poland. Okay. Uh, and had a, you know, like I said, a very nice time, going around Poland, learning about Poland, meeting this person, very nice lady, but like I said, she wasn't she wasn't a match. Uh, the next one time I went uh, to meet uh, a lady was in uh, France, Paris, Paris, France. 
last year during the riots, so that was fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, again, very nice experience. Nice, uh, enjoyed my vacation, but she wasn't a match. Now we come to the third one, Olga. And we, um, I tend to, when I communicate with someone, I do it for a pretty long time because um, one of my habits is to set what I call word traps. And what that is, is I ask questions and I listen to the answers and that tells me a lot of times what the motivation for this person is. Okay. So I know if they're looking for a, uh, if they're really looking for, a, you know, a commitment and a, and, a, and a relationship, or if they're looking for a sugar daddy or, or something along those lines. I'm definitely not a sugar daddy. Joe can <laughs> tell you, we don't make enough money to be sugar daddies. But uh, oh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> don't put those secrets out there. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> but... We talked for a little while, then we decided to exchange our our uh, personal information, which we did, and that went really well. And we were doing video calls and exchanging videos and photographs and. Well, well hold on one second, Greg. So, how long were you writing to her on the site before you, you did the Ember and got off site? About with, it, with Olga. Yeah. Oh no no no. No, it was, it was, uh, oh, I would say probably eight to nine months. Oh, eight to nine months you were writing back and forth. And yeah. then you got off the site and you were writing and communicating just between the two of you. Is that when you went to meet for her so, right after that? Uh, after that, after we had been talking off the site for a while, um, she suggested that uh, we meet in Spain. Okay. And, uh, so she was able to get to Spain. I was able to get to Spain. We did. Where was she coming from? Uh, Odessa, Ukraine. Oh, so she traveled all the way from Odessa on a train, probably to like Poland or something, and then she would have went through. Well, actually, she had to go to Bucharest. She went from Odessa to Bucharest to um, uh, maybe Budapest, and then to a Scandinavian country. I don't remember which one where she was able to catch the plane to, to uh, Spain. All right, so just so you guys um, know, it's not the easiest thing for a woman just to catch a flight out of Odessa, Ukraine right now and go meet in Spain. It's a lot of work because there are no flights. Mm -hmm. And so they have to take like a train or a taxi or something to get out of the Ukraine. Then they can get to somewhere where they can start taking planes. So it's it's And an if she's willing to do it, it is. If she's willing to do that, she's serious. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, I think so. I went into Ukraine to to see Marina, right? And it was that. Yeah, that's a train from train ride from hell, especially because you've got to go through two customs, and you're there for about a good three hours between Poland and um and the. But right. But vice versa. Exactly. That's why Marina thought you were serious because you came there, right? Yeah. Just like oh, yeah. she had to go because that's a lot of work. Yeah. And I did offer to go to Ukraine, and I was told absolutely positively not. <laughs> that's uh, what she told you. <laughs> that's yeah. They, no, you're you're not well, coming well, here. Heard about your safety. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I'm Marina. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Well, yeah. So she told you no. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, understand something, guys, and 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 for you guys that are out there listening, you have to understand something. I'm 71 years old. She is 54. And she has absolutely no problem with the age difference. And the reason I know this is because she told me that her first husband, there was a significant difference between their ages when, uh, when she married him. So she knows what she's getting into. And she's still willing to do it. So, again... They don't have the same attitudes about it. Now, she did tell me one thing that that I had to uh, kind of uh, get a little explanation on. Uh, she's very into proper nutrition, exercise, and you know, using um, probiotics, 
vitamins, minerals, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're, so we're talking about, we're going to have a life together. And she says, now you have to understand, I'm going to become your torturer. <laughs> and I told her that, um, I said, okay, depending upon what you're talking about, uh, this relationship, um, what she told me was that she said, no, I'm going to make sure that you eat properly, that you get exercise properly, that you take vitamins and all this other stuff to keep you going because the number is 100. And I said, 100 what? And she says, 100 years. I want you around for at least 30 more years. That's yeah, so cool. Are you interested in meeting the love of your life? Join men from all over the world as they take a trip and find their future brides. Check out our website at ukraineladies.com.